Greetings all, my name is Hal Adwan. I'm a third year architecture student at the German Jordanian University. And today I would like to discuss with you Henry Lefebvre as part of a report submitted to Dr. Jan Sachawash for urban studies. In this presentation, I will discuss briefly about the introduction and overview of Henry Lefebvre, Lefebvre and Cities, Lefebvre, Lefebvre's books, and at the end, conclusion. So basically, Henry Lefebvre was born in June 1901 in south of France. And as a child growing up in France at the time, he saw the change of daily life, the industrialization of the economy and the rapid urbanization of its cities. So as Henry Lefebvre was born in 1901, he was still in school by World War I. So he has witnessed post-World War I. Post-World War I, Lefebvre was affected badly, not only by the lack of food that was all over the world, nor by the heat of, France, of uh, Paris being occupied, but by the French who felt alienated from the new industrialized forms of work. All this led uh, Lefebvre to be inspired by Karl Marx, Sigmund Freud, Vladimir Lenin, among many other philosophers and pol political theorists, leading him to join the Party Communist uh, France. So we can conclude that Lefebvre is uh, an intellectual and a philosopher who was generally considered as a new Marxist. He published 72 books on different topics as social space, Karl Marx, materialism, modernity, and many more. Lefebvre's ethics, his practice theories and techniques um, were essentially utopian. In the context of social philosophy, the term utopian has a number of meanings. It is simply used to characterize a social philosophy as one that incorporates some description of ideal human society. So attempting to understand and act upon architecture and the city with Lefebvre, but without utopia and romanticism, risks muting the impact of his ideas. So although utopia may seem to have no place in the present, uh, Lefebvre reveals this as little more than a self-serving affirmation that there is no alternative. So the question here is, is Lefebvre an abstract theorist or not? On the ground that Lefebvre's thoughts uh, can be directly linked to utopia, people often mistake him as nothing more than an abstract theorist, which is wrong because he has proven along uh, all his works that he is a theorist of space. And how is that all connected to architecture and his thinking? So basically his thinking was based on observational research rather than imagination based on theories. And therefore it was, uh, it, it, brought significant practical value in terms of architectural planning and conception. Lefebvre impacted architectural theories greatly, and uh, not in France only, but internationally too. However, he didn't gain his popularity as soon as he published the books. It wasn't until the translation of uh, the production of space in 1991. Um, so basically, uh, Lefebvre's message for practice remained unclear and certainly unknown for some. This is due uh, to the suppression of his work uh, to the two most difficult aspects, which is romanticism and utopia, all of which question modernity while remaining revolutionary. So romanticism and utopia, along with contemporary, can be a huge thing to tackle. However, it may be claimed that this disrupts uh, Lefebvre's um, thoughts from becoming subjects of philosophical concern and uh, attempting to comprehend and function on architecture and the city with Lefebvre, but lacking utopia and romanticism risks muting his ideas effects. Uh, so basically we can understand that his approach was, wasn't only utopia or uh, romanticism, but it was an international and not linked to those two things. So Lefebvre and cities. We understand fully that uh, cities, when talking about cities historically, it can be concluded that cities have always been considered as centers of conflict, change and transformation. That's why revolutions, uh, politics, and many more emerge from within the cities. It's significant to address urbanization when talking about cities. So it's claimed that urban and urbanization are the theoretical categories, not empirical uh, objects. However, a Lefebvre proposal uh, of a um, transformation deals with urban as process, a multi-scalar process rather than a theoretical category. 
So how, um, how urban and urbanization are viewed are diverse, but it has been shown that many treat urban as something fixed and not affected by anything. This is, uh, as a result, takes for granted the significance of cities, regardless of the issues from within the, these cities. So Lefif had an interesting approach as he emerged the historic compromise between the neoliberalism and the man, uh, managerialism. Due to lack of time, we'll just be talking about it briefly. Uh, as uh, Lefebvre said, that it's the use of instruments ideologically and scientific, and the managerialism is the uh, reign of rational finality. So the neoliberalism and the managerialism compromise promote urban space as an item, as an object of economic expansion into in which investment and growth ends uh, in themselves. So Lefebvre's books, uh, Social Theories and Urban Contributions, a common theme in all of these books that a revolutionary open space carries the promise of liberation. Uh, so basically, I've, uh, I've tried to cover um, the three main books. We'll be starting with a uh, critic of everyday life. Critic uh, was a philosophical inspiration for the 1968 students' revolution in France and is considered as the founding text of all what we know as cultural studies, as well as major influence on the fields of contemporary philosophy, geography, and many more. So Lefebvre uh, uh, defined everyday life as the intersection of illusion and truth, power and helplessness, the intersection of the sector that man can control and the sector that he does not control. So we can understand that um, Basically, Lefebvre expands on Marx's uh, analysis by identifying new types of oppression that, and arguing uh, that capitalism not only abuses labor conditions, uh, also uh, any part of existence is drained of value or importance, which is then uh, repurchased uh, in the form of spectacular goods. So basically, he's attacking the capitalism uh, as a, a way of approach. So, and Lefebvre argued that everyday life basically uh, is underdeveloped sector compared to technology and production, and how capitalism changed uh, such that everyday was to be colonized. So we can understand that Lefebvre saw everyday as a revolution, and as the critic of a uh, daily reality of boredom versus social promises of free time and leisure. In this zone of everyday boredom experienced by all in society, regardless of class or profession, it could contribute to people realizing and thus revolu revolutionizing uh, their everyday life. So basically for FIVA, this was the uh, this was very important because he saw capitalism thriving and reproducing itself in daily life. So until a transformation in daily life or revolution, capitalism will continue to weaken the quality of life and suppress the genuine self-expression, which actually happens nowadays. So the critic of everyday life can be considered as crucial because it talks about the development of the conditions of human life rather than the abstract control of productive forces and that humans could reach a concrete utopian existence. So uh, here we'll be talking briefly about uh, a shift that was suggested by this book, that significant facts should shift to the sum total of everyday events, the appearance to totality, the individual elements to reality, and the appearance uh, of the great scenes of uh, the stage of history is, in uh, Lefebvre's opinion, just theoretical um, performances. And human beings, uh, in Lefebvre's opinion, are mystifiers that manage to play a role precisely by exaggerating their own importance. And in conclusion of this book, we can see that uh, the genuine reality only can be found in the unmysterious depths of everyday life. And history, psychology, and the science of mankind must become a study of everyday life. The second book is La Droit à la Vie, which is uh, the right to the city. And it's a concept and a slogan first suggested by Henry Lefebvre in 1968. And uh, basically it revived more uh, recently by social movements and intellectuals and many radical local governments as a call uh, to restore the city as a co-created space. What is a co-created space? Basically a co-created space is a place for life disconnected from the growing impact that capitalism have on society throughout the last two decades. So as an outcome, inequality caused by capitalism has had significant uh, influence on social life and the emergence of uh, urban inequalities in global cities. So Lefebvre paid 
a specific emphasis on the effect of capitalism and how capitalism affected the city. Urban life was downgraded into a commodity. Social interaction became increasingly uprooted and uh, basically urban space was uh, were turned into exclusive goods. When we're talking about uh, the right to the city, it is very important to understand what exactly is the urban. Urban theorists never properly understood what Lefebvre's uh, valuable description of the city and what exactly is the urban. So uh, the term urban does not refer to a specific uh, community or a geographic area or a set of structures. It is also, um, it's also not a nod, not a center or not a production hub. It's all of these things together. So every description would look at the basic qualities of all of them. Lefebvre recognizes urban as uh, the Hegelian type based on this conceptual foundation. Hegelian is a German philosopher and uh, his thought of the urban was the rational alone is real, which means that the old reality is capable of being expressed in rational categories. So, the urban, in uh, Lefebvre's opinion, is, uh, can be considered as concrete abstraction. It is concrete when we have certain material and is also concrete when it becomes uh, a part of our daily activities, whether we oppose or follow. Uh, so uh, the city in general uh, is a site of social centrality where the various elements and aspects of capitalism collide in space. And we, under, we have to understand that the simultaneous collection of goods, intelligence, and people is referred to as cityness. Uh, some cities do this better than others, leading to our own views uh, of poor and rich. And lastly, the uh, book of Lefebvre, The Production of Space. The Production of Space is Lefebvre's best known and most widely read work. It was the first published in, in French in 1974. And uh, in this book, basically, um, uh, Lefebvre argues um, how he wants um, to advance a Marxist approach that does not stress products but production. And humans not only produce social relations and use values, but actually in doing also produce social space. So briefly, we can say that in society, humans produce social spaces. Uh, Lefebvre argues that uh, space is social product or a dynamic social construction so the point suggests a change in research and it focuses on how the mechanism of space and how the mechanism of production is, as well as the, the diversity uh, that is along by the production. So therefore, a society creates its own social environment and the reproduction of society depends on the social development of urban space, resulting in diverse social environments. What is a uh, space? As I said, it's not a thing and not a container. It's uh, basically a product and a means of production. And here are just some things briefly uh, about uh, that were uh, suggested in the book uh, about how they, we have spatial practices and the representation of spaces and representational spaces. So we can see here the subjects, uh, the members of society, family, working class, and the experts and the inhabitants and users who passively experience space and how each of them definitely have uh, activities and have representational uh, spaces. Uh, here's just a, a graph of uh, the the thing that I've talked about briefly and how how humans affect the social space and how humans affect the social relations and resulting in diverse social environments. And here about the fields, the goal of this book is to discover or build theoretical cohesion between fields that are seen separately, similar to how chemical, electromagnetic, and many other fields in physics, for example. So the fields that Lefebvre argues about are, in this case, the physical nature, in other words, the cosmos or the physical surrounding, the mental and the social. So to further elaborate on the mental and social fields, it's significant to understand the utopian thoughts of Lefebvre, the ones discussed earlier, uh, that make Lefebvre seem as an abstraction theorist of spaces, including all the previous fields. Uh, conclusion of the production of space Spaces, uh, can be read as the creation of spaces rather than one. Uh, briefly said uh, and elaborated on how the, we have several spaces and how diverse they can be. And the few discusses several uh, of them, including social spaces, spatial practice, representation of spaces, and so on. Uh, so the conclusion of all the report as a whole, we can say that Henry Lefebvre's works have become a reference for a revolutionary approach. And in an architectural aspect, since we're talking about uh, urban studies, Lefebvre's politics of space and Lefebvre's contribution to socio-spatial theories uh, are 
as explained, um, valuable source uh, for analytical perspective for interpreting the scalar aspects of urban and how it all affects their uh, urbanization of any city. Uh, here are the references and thank you for your attention.